Welcome to Electron Line. Here's another example of how to find the forces on the members of a structure. This is a bridge structure and let's go ahead and try to find the force on the member between C and E. Now again we're going to use the method of sections. We're going to cut the structure right here. We're going to take that section, we draw it over here on the side and we draw all the forces that are acting on it from the external sources and then also we want to indicate the forces acting between C and E and then eventually between D and E and between D and F and that would be another video. But first before we can do that we need to figure out what the forces are at the support endpoints right there and for that we're going to use the sum of the moments about a particular point. We can start at A then we can calculate the force at K, we can have the rotational point at K and we can find the force at A. So let's start with the first one, the sum of the moments about point A is equal to zero. Now we have the first force here, the 3 kilonewton force which gives you a clockwise torque that will be a minus 3 kilonewtons times the distance of 5 meters away from the point of rotation. Minus, we have another 3 kilonewton force. Again, that will give us a clockwise moment and therefore that will be a negative and the distance now will be 10 meters. And finally we have this force right here that will be plus because that will give us a counterclockwise rotational motion that is F sub K and the total distance from the point of rotation to where the force is acting would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 meters. Now we can solve for F sub K. Notice that if I move these two over to the other side they become positive that will be plus 15 kilonewtons and that would be meters. I didn't put meters down and I might as well put meters down here. 15 kilonewton times meters plus 30 kilonewtons times meters and then we have the 25 here. We divide both sides by 25 so divide this by 25 meters. That's 45 divided by 25. Hmm, let's see. 45 divided by 25 equals 1.8 so the force at K is equal to 1.8 kilonewtons. And let's go ahead and label that here, 1.8 kilonewtons. So now we've determined it there. We can do it again by putting the pivot point right here and then calculating the force at this location. Or we can use the sum of the forces in the y direction. The sum of the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. We have the positive F sub A minus 3 kilonewtons minus 3 kilonewtons and plus 1.8 kilonewtons at point K that's 6 minus 1.8 that means F sub A is equal to 4.2 kilonewtons so now we have the force at A we have the force at K and let's go ahead and plug that in here 4.2 kilonewtons and now we're ready to calculate the force between C and E. So now we go to the section over here. Notice we also have forces here. We'll have a force from D to E, F, D, oop, not B, but D, E, and we have a force from D to F, F, D, F. So what we want to do here to make sure that we negate those two forces, we want to put a pivot point where they will be negated. So probably at D. I think I'm going to put a pivot point right there and sum up all the moments relative to that point. So the sum of all the moments relative to point D is equal to zero. Now let's add up all the surviving uh, forces that do not go right through that pivot point. Notice that this goes right to the pivot point, that goes right to the pivot point, so they're negated. We don't have to count those. We only have those three forces left. Of those three, two are known, and the one we're looking for is the force between C and E. So let's go ahead and add those up. We have this force right here, which gives us, and now let's put in the number that we have, that's 4.2 kilonewtons. Notice this will give us a clockwise rotation about point D. That means that is a negative torque minus 4.2 kilonewtons. And now we have to find the distance, the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point. So if I draw a dotted line here, this is the line of action of the force. We're trying to find this distance right here. Notice, if I go back over here, that 
Each of these are five meters in length. That means these are five meters in length as well. Five meters, five meters, and so forth. So this is five meters, and this is five meters. Notice that would be the halfway point. So that's five plus two and a half, or seven and a half meters. The second force is this force right here that gives me a counterclockwise motion that would be plus three kilonewtons times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force, which is right here, to the point of rotation, that's two and a half meters. And finally, I have this force right here, the force, and that will give me a counterclockwise motion, so it's plus the force between C and E, and the distance from there to there, notice that was indicated to be six meters, so we put a six meter distance there. Now all we have to do there is solve that for FCE. Moving everything over to the other side, turn the equation around, we get FCE multiplied times 6 meters is equal to, notice I move this to the other side, it becomes plus, so that would be plus 4.2 kilonewtons times 7.5 meters, and this will become minus when it goes to the other side, minus 3 kilonewtons times 2.5 meters. And now when I solve for this, I have to divide both sides by the six meters. Like this. And at this point, let's get a calculator out. Get uh, 4.2 times 7.5. Subtract from that. 3 times 2.5, that's 7.5. 7.5. And divide it by six meters. So what I get here, I get 24, that would be kilonewton meters divided by 6 meters. And so finally we get the force between C and E is equal to, well, that would be 4 kilonewtons. Now notice the answer I got here is a positive answer, which means that the direction of the arrow, the direction of the force here is in the correct direction, which means this is a force of tension because the, the member here is pulling away from joint C, so we have tension, and let me use a different color. So this member is under tension in this particular structure. All right, and that's how we do that. Now in the next video, we're, we'll go ahead and tackle the next two members. We'll figure out what the force is FDF and what the force is FDE. But because of lack of board space here, let me go on and make that the next video. And that's how it's done.